my willingness to be steward in that regard, just my willingness to be a steward, you know, in that regard. So um, that's my story in a nutshell, you know, <laughs> for, the, for the most part, give or take a few details. Awesome. So, so if you've just joined us, we're talking to Dr. Caden LeBray from North Carolina, USA. Uh, such an inspirational young lad. Um, I'm going to say that because you're still a youth in my books. <laughs> um, so just a little bit about your basketball. And that really intrigued me, you know, uh, playing professional basketball. And then you went overseas to Canada and Europe. Uh, just tell me a little bit about that. Oh, man. Um, shoot. It was phenomenal. Um, the, 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 the mere exposure. The, I wouldn't even call it a culture shock. Um, just learning about different cultures. I, in fact, that's one of the things that was intriguing about our graduation because it was so many cultures in one room. And I think, you know, edu I think travel is one of the best forms of education. I think, I mean, more better than reading a book. You know, when you get all of those different cultures in the room and you get to ask questions and you get to listen to perspectives, it helps you gain new understandings and new forms of confidence that you wouldn't have in absence of those interactions. And um, yeah, I mean, that's what basketball did for me. I got to see, I mean, Kosovo was one of the, Kosovo was one of the um, poorest countries at the time. And it probably still is not not doing so good. Um, you know, Canada was phenomenal. You know, just, just I just, just the cultures. And um, every time I played basketball overseas, you know, my team would pay for me to live somewhere. I wouldn't even stay with a team gave me to stay. I would always stay with some people in the community. And wow. so, you know, even right now I have those international relationships with people because when my team would say, Hey, we got, we, we, we giving you this money to stay here. I would say, no, nah, I ain't staying there. I'll build my relationships with somebody in the community, some family. And until this day in every country I've played in, and I still can call those people now. Wow. So they've just become family to you. Yeah, my human family, so I call it. Awesome. Yeah, and so, you know, at the very outset, uh, outset you mentioned that um, this journey is all about God. Um, and I see you wrote your first book, Lost and Found, The Dark Testament. Take mm -hmm. me through that journey. You know, what inspired you to write that book and how, how did this all, um, you know, in, uh, just the entire process of writing this book, the title and... Um, just what inspired you to write the book? Um, so we all have experiences and, you know, sometimes if we take the wrong lessons from our experiences, we lose ourselves in our experiences. Um, you know, and that's the concept of lost and found. You know, I was having these very, very challenging experiences as, as a youth, so you call it. And, um, and I was, I was, I was battling, but constantly I was able to find myself taking the, the right lesson from them, you know, after a long period of time. Initially, when things was happening to me, such as I had a pastor try to molest me, um, you know, my my involvement with the getting involved with a gang, mm -hmm. um, being by members of the KKK, um, being falsely accused of rape. Oh my um, goodness being kicked out of school and having to sleep in the men's locker room for a year, and, you know, just coach telling me to quit basketball, just stuff, that, you know, drugs, alcohol, stuff that, you know, that happens in college that goes spoken and unspoken all the time. Every time I had an experience, I was constantly taking the wrong lesson from it, you know, and, and it was send me on a deeper and darker path mm -hmm. at the conclusion of the experience. So, through those experiences, I just learned to, once I connected to God, I learned how to pull the right lesson from the experience. And, and once I did that, my experiences, instead of them bringing me desperation, they brought me inspiration. And now they've made me an inspiration through my ability to follow God in the process of persevering through them. And so, yeah, I, I, once I discovered that, I just started writing and I said, you know, your story is not for you. You know, everybody has a story. We're all authors. Just some of us are not published. Yeah. And um, so what I, just, I wrote the story and I started sharing it with people. Then I started to see how me sharing my truth benefited other people. 
And so now I make that routine. I mean, if you know me now, you know, I'm very blunt, I'm, I'm very uh, direct, and I'm truth oriented in my dealings with people because I see how much it's beneficial to tell people the truth. Yes, I so agree with you. But I think it's just, a, a, you know, it's just uh, being mature, a part of growing up and um, finding your purpose and your passion and um, working on yourself. I think that is important. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Yes. So what inspired you to write your second book, Lost and Found? Uh, no, sorry, your second book was The Keys to Freedom. Mm -hmm. The Keys to Freedom, when you get so tired that you can't sleep. Um, now, you know, initially when, I, when, I, when, when my journey started, you know, I, I, as I was building my relationship with God, I started to learn about self-value. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the principles that I was practicing, I was valuable in God's eyes, but I wasn't valuable in my eyes. Mm -hmm. so it was like, God see you as, as, as everything, but occasionally you see yourself as nothing. And, and, and the more you do that, you start to make choices that doesn't reflect what God has for you. You know, so as I learned self-esteem and self-value, I learned an important part of building value is to one, um, be, have freedom. Every decision that you make is attached to your freedom. And so um, I started to make right. I, I I started taking becoming wealthy serious. I started taking building up a building up a business serious. I started taking my self esteem serious. I started taking my self value serious. And so I wanted to impart the tools and people for them to do the same. And so I wrote the book called The Keys to Freedom, because and when you get so tired that you can't sleep. Because constantly, as I was dealing with my, my self-esteem, you know, I would have nights where I would try to rest. And I'm like, I can't rest. And, and those were the moments God was giving me the words for the book. But for most people, you know, when they get tired and they can't rest, they, go to, they still go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, me, I get up and I find something productive to do. I, I feel like I got to earn my sleep, mm -hmm. you know, every day. And so, um, yeah, just just giving people the tools to for, to fight to for freedom mentally, physically, and spiritually, because every every decision that we make as humans, freedom is attached to it. You know, if you want to be if you want to be wealthy, you got to become free from thoughts that's associated with being broke. Mm -hmm. If you want to be happy, you got to become free from thoughts that's associated with being sad. If you want to be joyous, you got to become free from thoughts that's associated with depression. And so this book will teach you how to systematically and with structure be, um, enter your own freedom, mentally, physically, or spiritually. Can I ask you a personal question? Go ahead, go ahead. With all the accusations, um, were you charged for rape? Were you in prison? No, not at all. I, I, I went to court and, um, you know, I won't I won't say the, the girl's name because I, I don't tell the story for humility. You know, I tell it for teaching. But the girl, she went to the court and she told the judge that um, that she only accused me of rape because she didn't know how to tell me that she liked me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I, it. it and, 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 and as a pro athlete, I've had a, you know, I've had my long line of experiences with women vis-a-vis -vis my days as a player. But, um, you know, experiences like this has really told me a lot about the mind of a woman, you know, and, and the different measures they resort to um, when they want something. Oh, God. <laughs> are, you, are you single? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. That's great. Dr. Lebray, um, so you do a lot of humanitarian work. Um, yeah. And you recently received the honorary doctorate in humanitarianism. Um, we mm -hmm. shared a stage together in Atlanta, Georgia. Take me That's to that right. journey. What, what was your feeling on that night? Just humble. You know, uh, a lot of the times when I my relationship with God has influenced me in this, in this capacity. Uh, I don't realize what happens until after it happens. In the moment, I'm so focused on being humble. 
and and that it's almost like I'm absent. You know, I just I just was looking around. I just was happy to see people smiling. You know, but the biggest, the most intriguing thing about that day was seeing the people from the, the other countries, because I, like I said, the greatest form of education is travel. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why I'm so glad we connected because I'm like, you know, for me, I will lo I love to connect international. I love to connect with people from different colors, cultures, and creeds, and 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 uh, because that's why I become educated. You know, I'm pretty sure there's things about um, Cambodia that that would that would blow my socks if I was to learn it. You know, and um, honestly, I'm interested in that. So no matter how long it took for us to make this happen, I, you know. <laughs> I wasn't going to give up. <laughs> well, I was actually taken aback because you sent me a message. Um, you actually sent me an inbox message on Facebook. And uh, you said, it was so great meeting you. And I couldn't quite remember you <laughs> at that time. And then I said to you, and then we, we had a little conversation. And I said to you, maybe I should get you onto my show. And here you are. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and it's taken a while, I must say. Uh, you know, it's just uh, me settling in here, uh, uh, trying to find my feet. And mm -hmm. uh, you actually the first person I'm talking to on my show in Cambodia or from Cambodia. <laughs> yeah, the time difference is getting to me, and it's uh, you know there's a lot of confusion. But I'm sure at some point I'll get it right. Um, so you actually do a lot of extracurricular activities and you help uh, little kids, um, teaching them self-defense um, with boxing. Take me through that journey. I think that is just so admirable and you're doing a fantastic job. Um, so I, I, as I've evolved, you know, it's always, it's always you know, the 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 lessons I'm learning and the process of my journey, and then I try to make sure um, I impart the skills that I'm grasping into other people. You know, it's about everybody up now. Um, but I feel like within everybody, especially adults, there's a fighter. You know, there's a warrior that that you know our life experiences influences us to forget about. You know, there's a champion inside of all of us, and you know, some of us don't play sports and you don't have to play sports, but we must, it's always important for us to create some kind of platform that keeps us connected to that, um, that champion inside of us. And that's why I started boxing. I'm like, how can I practically create something that I can um, inspire people to tap into um, their inner warrior, their inner champion, um, the inner overcomer the inner beast you know and i said boxing self-defense you know and so i started doing that which was which was great because i work in prison and um so just just giving people the tools that i'm acquiring and um so i started doing that and we've we've had a phenomenal turnout zoo 26 boxing club um wow. you know we're, we're, we're doing pretty good you know uh, shout out to my my staff or coach old coach Delisa Harper, Coach Chris, and we just hired new staff. Um, um, Coach Kevin and Coach Coach Monisha Whitfield. So we're doing it. We're doing a good job. Like I said, we got we got plenty of kids in and out of that gym. Um, we teach self defense. We teach MMA. We teach uh, work, which is a dance oriented class, and we teach boxing all under one roof. Um, but to God be the glory for the experience, because you know, like I said, um, without that guidance. I'm just an average guy, you know, literally without that guidance, I go from extraordinary to average, just like that. You know, so it's, it's just, that's how it's just like that. Yes. So you have a full time job as well at the prison. What do you do at the prison? You don't want to know those answers. I want to know. I'm curious. To know. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, let's just say. We do everything it takes to make sure people like you are safe. That's what we do. But, you know, everything it takes to make sure to sit, to make sure nobody escapes. And I'm, nah, nah, to be honest, man, you know, it's 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 an experience every day. 
because um, you know, you just never know what you're gonna get. And you got some, you know, you got crime of every nature, thieves, rapists, um, murderers, and and but it's a great experience for me because it because it teaches me how to remain without judgment, you know, towards anybody. Like I said, yeah, and 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 in the prison, you know, I like to say I got some of the best rapport um, with the inmates in the in the, in the job. The humans, excuse me, the humans in the job. I got some of the best rapport with them um, because it's all about respect. Looking at them as a human first, regardless of what they've done. I mean, in God's eyes, it's all the same. We don't want to be judged for making an error, and so we shouldn't do it to them. And so this job is make is 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 teaching me that experientially. Um, there's some good days and there's some bad days, but uh, for the most part, it pays the bills and allows me to be in a position to inspire, um, you know, people. Yes. Well, I'm going to tell you a little secret. My late husband was a policeman, so I used to hear all the inner details as well. Right, right. So you have an idea what goes I, on. I have an idea, yes. Yeah. Tough yeah. job. <laughs> But yeah, you gotta have, you gotta be thick skinned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a job that's tough, but I can't imagine what the world would be like if there was not nobody to do it. It's a job that gotta get done. Mm -hmm. It has yeah, to get done. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's just it. <sighs> you know. Don't say anything. Work? No, don't say it. <laughs> it's a public forum. Don't say it. <laughs> Rather I not. Guess. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. Dr. Lebray, um, if you had to give a message to our youth, it's um, Youth Month in South Africa still till the end of June. What would be your message? I mean, you've done so much, you know, uh, being an entrepreneur, humanitarian, um, a full time employee, um, an author, uh, you're doing so much. So, what would be your message to the youth in South Africa or across the globe? Um, I would tell them, you don't know. I would say, I would tell them, um, just be mindful. Um, when your grandmothers, when your mothers, when your sisters, when your loved ones, um, when they passed away, which death is one of the greatest teachers of compassion. When they passed away, they didn't know. Your, when your grandmother had cancer, got diagnosed with cancer, she didn't know that that was going to happen. When your when your brother, uh, you know, got hurt and got stitches or he fell, he didn't know that was gonna happen. Um, when your when your when your when your cousin got shot or got in a car accident, he or she didn't know that that was gonna happen. And so, case in point, a lot of us do not know what's gonna happen moment by moment, mm -hmm. and the people that we love that things has happened too, they didn't know. But what you, what you do know right now is that you have an opportunity in life. And so the best thing to do with that opportunity is to get some, you know, from life. You know, look at life in the, in the face and say, I'm here to get something from you and to spend your natural born moments every day doing the best you can to leave something on earth that's gonna benefit the people that's coming after you. Because just like they didn't know, what you don't know is that you could be the next superstar. Love it, you could, absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. you, they, they didn't know. They didn't know that they was gonna die. They didn't know that they was gonna be sick. You got cousins and grandmothers in the hospital right now. But what you also don't know is that you could be next. Sure. You can be the next on your deathbed, or you can be the next president to change the world. Yes. So spend your time making decisions um, that reflects what you what you what you want. Absolutely love it. So, Dr. Lebray, where to from here? What's in store for you? What's uh, what's the goals ahead? Well, the next the next milestone for this year is I'm gonna publish the children's book. Um. It'll be titled Colors, um, 
And after that, I'm really going to pick up motivational speaking because my goal and desire to maybe come to Cambodia is to travel around the world, motivating the masses. Um, and so that's what my goal is now. That's what my next target goal is, to travel around the world, motivate people of all colors, cultures, and creeds. Start, start right now. Please do that. Please do that. We have students that you can actually teach some really nice self-defense um, um, you know, actions or, or, or give them some tips or uh, I think it's so needed. It's so needed everywhere in the world. Okay. Um, so we'd love to have you in Cambodia and I'd love for you to go to South Africa as well. Um, I have some amazing people that I'd like to connect with you in South Africa. Um, so I think you can maybe collaborate with people there. Um, let's talk. Sounds good. The gun is loaded. Let's pull the trigger. The gun is loaded. We're talking Let's about go. a person that works in a prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a hundred percent open to it. You know, just let's we we can make the plans and, and trust me, um immediate, immediate action. I mean, this this is the time of action. Um so yeah, let's let's talk and let's set it up. I would love to um to make that happen. Yes. We'd love to um, have you over in Cambodia as well. So plan that trip. It's such a, such a beautiful place. Let's make it happen. Let's make okay. it happen. Most definitely. Is there anything else that you want to add and uh, maybe tell our audience, um, how can one get hold of you? Um, do you have anything online to share? Uh, anything? Um. Not really. Uh, I, 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 my name is Caden Labre, and um, you know I'm a big steward of winning, and 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 I'm, I'm a believer that the people that farm me are the ones that's meant to farm me. When I get to, when I get to the big stage, um, it'll be easier to farm me. But right now, I rather um, take action and attract the right people, and then when I get to the bigger stage, um. You know, like I said, it, my, my modus operandi comes from basketball. When I was a basketball player, I believe that when you're a winner, people will find you. They'll come looking for you. Mm -hmm. And so that's my same about this right now. Take one opportunity at a time, make the best out of it, and then the right people will come to you and you'll just keep building and building and building and building and building and building and building. And building. So all those who seen this, those are the people who meant to hear me. If not, it's meant for me and you to connect and build something from there. And I'm completely content with that. You know, so inspiration. I can go on talking to you, but I, I need to really uh, get down to some work and call it a night. But um, I'm sure we're going to have a follow up conversation at some point in time. Um, it was Absolutely. awesome talking to you. And um, I'm sure a lot of the youth and people out there are going to be so inspired by this chat. We'll see. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. And I thank you for your time. Thank you for taking out your time. And it was awesome to talk to you as well. And I'm going to listen. I see you in Cambodia. Yay! <laughs> I see you in Cambodia. I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely looking forward to that. Dr. Caden Lebray, thank you for joining us on the Red Corner Show. Um, coming to you live. And we, we were actually live on Facebook. All right, I love it. I love it. Yes, so please go and respond to any comments if you are on the on the Facebook page. It'll be on my Facebook page. Um, I'm sure people okay. would love to hear from you if there are any comments. I, I'm not sure. I think it's still early in South Africa, uh, five hours behind Cambodia, um, and you just getting up. <laughs> so, um, what is the time there now in North Carolina? 12, 11, 11.30. It's, it, right now it's, it's 11.38. Okay, okay. Um, I see my internet connection is unstable, um, but I'm sure you can hear me. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming on the show and it was great chatting to you. We're definitely going to chat uh, more. And I wish you all the best in everything that you do. Uh, keep on inspiring, keep on helping, um, carry on doing your humanitarian work. You are making a huge difference and you're impacting lots of lives. And that's what we like to see 
in people, uh, no matter how small or how big it is. Um, it's always great to see that and encourage others to do more as well. And uh, I'm going to be signing off from the Red Corner Show. If you would like to be on my show, please drop me an email, redcornershow at gmail.com. Let's get chatting like Dr. Caden Debray and share your stories as well. Take care all. God bless. Bye.